Hi, I'm Jordan Feigenbaum. I'm a doctor, a competitive lifter, and I've been a strength coach for over 15 years, and this is Lift Support. Lift support, tech support, I don't know what we're calling this thing, but whatever it is, it's episode three. This is me reviewing your form on the lifts that you've submitted to Barbell Medicine. If you want to be featured on the channel, you want me to review your lifts, send me an email with your video attached, ideally, to media at barbellmedicine.com. Take a landscape video, that would be the best, ideally a multi-rep set, but I can work with singles if that's all you have. If I didn't get to your video this time around, um, it's because I was traveling last week. We had a seminar, also have a powerlifting meet this weekend, so I haven't been checking the inbox every single day. But if you send me a video, I'll do my best to put it on the YouTube channel whenever we do these things. And if you like these videos, you know, comment below, like, subscribe, do that whole thing for the algorithm and such. We haven't got too many views on these things yet, so maybe we need some clickbait. But in any case, if you haven't joined us before, we are going to look at different techniques and different people with different lifts, usually squat, bench press, overhead press, and deadlift and uh, give people some pointers and go from there. Now, the lens that we're evaluating form through is the REP model that we've created. And that's an acronym standing for repeatable, efficient, and the lift meets the points of performance that we've determined ahead of time. We're not really adjusting technique in order to reduce risk of injury. Injury risk from pretty much all types of barbell training is relatively low, two to four injuries per thousand participation hours. Now that's pretty low compared to other non-contact sports and certainly much lower than contact sports but people invariably will say, nah, technique, injury, there's a big uh, correlation there, even though proper technique or good technique has never actually been defined in the research literature. So we kind of just made up this definition, made up this lens to look at technique through, and so far, so good. So let's stop wasting time. Let's get into this week's lift support. All right, first up, this is Abdul. He's doing a high bar squat. This is the first time I've seen any of these things, so give me a little grace here. It looks pretty wide on the stance. He turns his toes out right before he starts and the ankles kind of cave in at the bottom. That was a little high as well. Oh, he's going for a second rep. Yeah, that was above parallel too and just didn't quite make it. So, okay, well, first props to you for using safeties. It looks like a CrossFit rig you were squatting in. Not everyone used safeties and uh, you definitely want to do that unless you have side spotters and a back spot, which it can be tough to come by. So great job using the safeties. Uh, also, you kept your balance pretty well. I didn't see your heels come up, didn't see your toes come up. Um, I did see your ankles, the medial malleolus, uh, kind of cave in, flatten out uh, at the bottom, and also the squat was about parallel, and I think that's mostly due to a stance width. So I'd go narrower, i try to go lower, and uh, try to keep the knees out and forward um, as you descend, so that way they, things don't roll in at the bottom. I think that'll help you get that depth. And then the other thing I'll say, last thing I'll say, I see no reason to go this close to failure in training. You can save it for a powerlifting meet if you're gonna do that or if you're actually testing one RMs, but I don't know that testing a two RM in training is terribly useful um, just from a training adaptation standpoint versus the amount of fatigue you incurred. All right, next up is Jack V. This is 175 kilos. Looks like he's doing a low bar squat. Okay. On an Olympic bar, it's kind of kind of whippy. No spotters, no spotter arms. I don't know that I love that, but. Yeah, the depth is just, we'll just pause this at depth here. Yeah, it's just right at parallel. So um, we'll try to go a bit lower. And then the other things I see, one, the elbows are kind of lifting up out of the bottom. I'd really try to keep the elbows and the humerus kind of static. Ideally, this upper arm bone, the humerus, that angle is the same as your back angle and doesn't really move out of the bottom. So I just really try to keep those still. Sometimes I think elbows silent or elbows still. Sometimes I actually cue elbows down and forward. Uh, during the descent and the ascent, try to keep them from going up like that. I'd also try to go a little bit lower. It doesn't really look like your stance is too wide, but I would try to go, um, again, a little bit lower. And then next time, ideally you have some sort of spotter in place just in case something goes wrong. But otherwise, the balance looked pretty good. I think the knees um, stayed in a good position. Um, yeah, all right, let's move on. This is Zach. What was this, 275? Looks like a high bar squat. Nobody, just nobody likes spotters. Okay. Yeah, he'll stay on the ground. Looks like good depth, good tempo. I'd probably even actually have him go faster, try to bounce out of the hole a little bit more. Yeah, depth is good. Back position's good. 
Balance is good. Nothing wrong with these. It just would go faster and yeah, balance. Okay, cool. Nice set. All right, next squat. This is uh, Timon. I believe that's 120 kilos, so 264. High bar squat. Elbows are far too high, so right off the bat, get the elbows down. I also would not look that far down, especially on a high bar squat. Would look out quite a bit further. The stance is quite narrow, so that's why you see all that forward knee travel. It's not a bad way to squat. I just think you'd be more efficient and you'd squat more weight if your stance was uh, wider. So I'd actually start about an inch wider than that. And uh, yeah, get your elbows down. Cool. Uh, just a aside there with the elbows, it looks like the grip width was actually super narrow. And yeah, you do kind of want a narrow-ish grip width, but don't artificially make it narrower and then make your elbows go to the moon. So would consider widening, widening the grip if you can't get your elbows down with just some conscious cueing. And I would widen the stance, walk out to your normal stance, then step out about a half inch or an inch wider each side, keep the same toe angle, see what that looks like for a high bar squat, and then move your gaze out. Don't, don't look straight down. Yeah, zero out of 10, would not recommend. All right, this has gotta be Duke Hall. He's a 55 year old lifter. Okay, looks kind of like mid bar, mid bar-ish. Depth is good. Balance is good. You just watch his feet. And he's not even wearing weightlifting shoes. See, you can do it too. Yeah, the only thing I see is that the... Okay, yeah, let's watch this again. Now, take a, take a look at his knees. We want them to get in the position that they need to be in at the bottom, about halfway down. And he's getting close. They just keep sliding forward. So I would actually cue him knees forward and out first, try to get to that position sooner. But yeah, back position looks good. Depth looks good. Nice work, dude. All right, this is Ash, high bar squat. Not a terribly great coaching angle because I can't see your feet and it's only one repetition. So let's watch it again. So I can't really see the bottom of your feet, but otherwise look at this. Yeah, good depth, good bounce. Kept your back position quite nicely. All right, nice work for, for the single, yeah. All right, this is Mertuza. If I'm saying that wrong, my apologies. What is this, 120 kilos again? 264, must be a popular weight. It's like 264, 275, right in that region. He's wearing chucks. All right, no spotters again. Just, just going with God here. Elbows are far too high. And that's above parallel. Yeah, it's above parallel as well. I think his stance is too wide. I, I can't exactly tell from here. You'd usually want to see it from the front or maybe the back, but yeah, he's doing a good job staying balanced and the bar path is okay. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just high and the elbows are also too high. So check this out, my friend. So one, you have, it looks like you're squatting outside of a squat rack. Squat in the squat rack, use the safeties. They're there for you. Uh, two, get your elbows down. Again, um, instead of thinking about cranking your elbows up to the ceiling, uh, don't chicken wing it, don't do that. Try to get your elbows down into the side. Um, one of the cues that I like for this is thinking about shouldering or lifting the bar out of the rack with your back rather than doing anything with your upper body. Your upper body is just along for the ride. That's thing one. Thing two, I'd probably narrow your stance. So the opposite of what I told the last guy, I would walk out to your normal stance and then narrow it about an inch each side, keep the same toe angle, and then you have to commit to going lower. So I would probably do warm up sets if you're doing sets of five, if you're doing sets of six, I would do sets of five or six, whatever it is, all the way up and then making sure that you're going to depth every single time. So starting from 60 kilos, then to 75 or 80 kilos, then to 90 or 95 kilos, and you're gonna find a weight where the bar speed slows down significantly, and that's where you should stop for the day. I don't think you'll be able to squat 120 to depth with the new, new changes we're making, not only to the stance width, but also to your what you're doing with your arms, but that's okay too. Uh, we just, the P part of rep, points of performance for a squat. We're usually trying to squat just below parallel unless we have a good reason not to. And uh, I think that's what you're shooting for, squatting below parallel. So I would take some weight off the bar, make sure we're getting below parallel, slightly narrower stance, fix the upper body. All right, this is Sasha, it's a 14 year old girl, 140 kilos. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was a single, let's watch it again. Um, can't really tell depth because we're above the height of the hip. You'd wanna be like at hip height. Um, just to, to take a good look at death. We can watch her feet, make sure she's balanced. Stance width looks good. Yeah. yeah it looks okay and it's certainly speedy, so 
I have no issues with her squatting that weight. Uh, should women be strength training? Absolutely. Should kids be strength training? Absolutely. It's actually part of the youth resistance training guidelines. Do they need to be a power lifter? Not necessarily, but squat looked pretty good. I just think it might have been a little high from this particular angle, but I was happy she was using spotters, like the safety arms, and she had a spotter. So that's good. All right, last squat. This has got to be David F. Looks like 315. I like those shoes and the, all the bars on the wall. That's pretty cool. Elbow position is good. Depth is good. Bar path is good. Balance looks pretty good. Yeah, feet stay flat. I would just go faster. Yeah, so the thing is we're trying to take advantage of the stretch uh, reflex at the bottom. And if you go down too slow, you kind of miss it. And if you go down too fast, you can also miss it plus lose balance. And so I would just cue yourself from warm-ups all the way as you work up to your top set to go faster, bounce harder. So how fast do I want you to descend? As fast as you can without losing balance. All right, that's a wrap on squats. Let's move on to the bench press. All right, so first up here is Matt. Looks like, what's this, 90 kilos? Yeah, so we're looking for the butt to stay on the bench, does. We're looking for the shoulder blades to be retracted into the bench, they are. We're looking for the correct touch point, which given his grip width, looks to be appropriate. Yeah, this is a good set of bench and the bar is moving back on the way up. So yeah, pretty much meets all the points of performance as far as I can tell. Nice. So the wider the grip is in general, the higher the bar is gonna touch, the more elbow flare you're gonna have, the narrower, the grip is the lower the bar is going to touch the more elbow tuck or shoulder adduction or humeral adduction adding towards the midline you're gonna uh, see so that looks pretty good all right second bench it's gotta be david we just saw you squat oh yeah it just comes down and touches you a little crooked on the chest huh. all right yeah touch point looks pretty good as far as why it was crooked coming down uh it, you'd want to make sure that your grip is even so you use the score marks to make sure the grip is even make sure that you're as even as possible on the actual bench itself, not off to one side. Um, but otherwise, sometimes it just do be like that. All right, third bench. Oh, it's David again. This has got to be a multi-rep set. I think this is 80 kilos. Yeah, still got a little bit of that crooked kind of thing. It almost looks like the right side is tucking more than the left side. Um, I can't be certain from this particular angle, and I don't know if that's a twud, time wasted on useless detail, or just, you know, something else is going on. Um, I probably wouldn't cue it unless I saw it happen more and more and more and it looked like it was compromising efficiency. I don't know. Looked pretty good from here. All right, this is Constantine. I believe we have two angles for his bench press. No no safety arms, no spotter, which I, I don't love. But, you know, here we are. He could send the video in. He, he lived, so... Yeah, he's got a wider grip, so that means he's going to touch higher, but staying on the bench. Only thing I'd want to see is maybe the shoulders get pulled back into the bench before each rep. But yeah, pause is good. I can't really tell the bar path from here, but it looks all right. Oh, good. We got a side view. Is this the same bench? Like set? Looks like it looks like the same weight. What do you think that guy's doing in the background? He's benching, so all right. Just way out in front of him. Oh, yeah. Good bar path. So you'll notice that the bar doesn't actually travel as far backwards with a wider grip. That's because it doesn't come as far forward on the way down. But yeah, I would just try to pull the shoulder blades back prior to each rep. But otherwise, yeah, pretty solid, dude. Oh yeah, and Constantine did mention that his bench press wasn't really going up. Strength really wasn't improving. I don't really see anything on technique that would you know, cause me to believe, wow, technique is definitely holding you back here. I'm gonna guess it's mostly a programming issue. So depending on what your program looks like and how your bench press has been kind of tracking over the past few weeks and, and months, that would kind of clue me in. And so I'd probably look at that first rather than, you know, really try to improve technique any further. We're always chasing more efficiency with our with our lifts, but this to me looks good enough. And I'd be I'd be really looking at uh, at your programming and a press. Look, we got some overhead pressing. Yeah, so this is. What was this 135? It's not bad. So this is a strict press, right? Not like the Olympic press, dynamic press kind of thing. You can tell just not a lot of hip movement to get the bar moving. Um, only things I'd want to see here, and this is more just a personal preference. Uh, I would want the bar actually to be down on your chest. Uh, the thing is, if you're going to transfer any force from the lower body and the trunk into the bar, the it's going to get the most amount of force transfer if the bar is on your chest. Um, 
But yeah, that looks pretty good. The only other thing I would do, hey, on the last rep, you, you did pretty good there. Let me watch it the second time. Uh, the only other thing I would do is probably avoid pushing your head through once the bar clears your head. I, I would just get out of the habit of doing that because as the weight gets heavier and heavier and heavier, the bar speed is going to slow down further and further and further. If like the only way that you've trained to do the press is to get your head through really quickly, I think that that can compromise your ability to like, kind of stay back, keep pressing, and then uh, you know lock it out. So from here, I would get the bar down on your chest, make sure the elbow uh, is slightly in front of the bar if we're looking at it from profile, push the bar up and back, keep your head back till the bar is much a little bit closer to lockout. All right, that's a wrap on bench press. Let's do some deadlifts. This is Sean. What do you think this is? Like 225, 275? Yeah, hips don't move before the bar leaves the floor. That's good. Looks like you're able to keep the bar on the legs for the most part. Yep, arms are nice and straight. The only thing is I would move your gaze out. So don't look straight down. Just got to get out of that habit. Look out a little bit. And then at the top, pause for a beat, puff your chest out, wait for the applause, and then you can set it down. But yeah, nice set. Okay, cool. All right, next deadlift. This is Dylan. Yeah. That looks pretty good. I, just you're not standing up all the way at the top. Yeah, just stand up all the way at the top and then you get this one chance during deadlifts. It's like one of the only exercises, uh, certainly of the big three or a big four if you're lump and press in there, to do a deliberate thoracic extension under load. Uh, so just, you know, at the top, puff your chest out, stand up tall. And again, like I said in the last one, wait for the applause. Maybe someone will clap. All right, this is Matt. Don't know what the weight is. Yeah, you guys already know what I'm going to say. The hips are a little low. And then you see him kind of rock forward to get his shoulders over the bar, get his hips higher for each rep. So he does have a kyphosis in the thoracic spine that's a little bit more pronounced. I actually don't think that's a huge deal, uh, especially because it's not actively sort of rounding during the rep. Not that I would think that's a huge deal either, but um, just for the uh, you know keyboard folks who are probably not on this channel, given the amount of use that we get on these things. Um, yeah, it, lo it looks fine. I would just get your hips up a little bit um, and then that way you won't rock forward because the real issue with rocking forward is more from the efficiency standpoint. If your hips come up and you rock forward, the bar goes off your legs, kind of stuck in no man's land. So raise your hips up, get real, real tight, drag the bar up your legs. And then I know you're in this small space deadlifting. So I know you were looking down because that's just like, where else are you gonna look at that plastic tub in front of you? But I would in fact look at that rather than the ground. So otherwise, yeah, deadlift looks pretty good. All right, this is Josh, was this 425? 325. Yeah, there's just a little bit of the hips being a hair low. You can see the hips rise up before the weight leaves the floor each time. Camera's moving, which isn't super, super helpful, but yeah, hips are just a little low. But you're doing a great job keeping the bar on your legs. Oh, it is 325. Okay, hey, 335. Thank you for the, thank you, cameraman. The moving helps. Uh, yeah, I would just raise your hips up a little bit. And then the next time you video, your hips shouldn't move up prior to the bar leaving the floor. But still do a great job keeping the bar on your legs. That was great. All right, this is, also that gym looks cool. This is Maxims. He's from Latvia. This is a five rep max. We'll see about that. First rep looked good. Yeah, second rep looked good too. Notice the hips aren't really moving before the bar leaves the floor. Well, that one did because the hips were a little low. See, I try to pay a compliment, see what happens. Yeah, same thing. Hips are just a hair low and then they gotta shoot up before the weight leaves the floor. Get your butt up, dude. Do it, get it up. Yeah, it moved a little bit. Yeah, good lockout. I also don't think that was a real 5RM. I think you had at least, you know, another five kilos in you. I just think, uh, you know, every time you set the bar down, it's gonna ramp forward off of your quads and go away from you. Um, so you're gonna have to roll the bar back to over the midfoot, which is about an inch forward of your shins if you're standing up tall. And then uh, make sure that when you then push your shins into the bar, you're not kicking it further forward, not dropping your butt when you try to squeeze your chest up. Um, so yeah, your hips are just a little low on those last three reps. All right, last but not least, I think this is Sasha. Is this 140 again? 
So she's deadlifting off mats. And I, yeah, okay, so the plate, we'll pause it. The plates are small, so they're not the 450 millimeter uh, standard height plates. So that makes sense, she's on mats. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. The straps, that's fine, especially in this commercial gym. I can tell by the lighting, they probably would not be up for chalk, most likely. But I also don't know how stoked they are about all the plates on the floor either. The only thing that bothers me from like a safety standpoint is the plate in front of the plate, <laughs> the plates on the bar on the left. So I'm like, what if you set it down and you like clip that side and the bar shoots away from you? See, that's what I'm worried about from an injury standpoint of the accidents. I think it's under the age of 18. They did a study, it was 4,000 people who came to the emergency room due to an exercise induced injury. And if the people under the age of 18, I think 75% of them were due to dropping a weight on themselves. Under 18, she's 14. Deadlift, about to deadlift, uh, 308 pounds, 140 kilos. Yeah, okay. So you guys already know what I'm gonna say. Let's, let's uh, just watch this deadlift again. Yeah, hips are a little low. And so when the hips are low, you have two strategies, two solutions to the problem. So when the hips are low, the shoulders are not far enough forward over the barbell. And so what you can do is you can raise the hips get the shoulders over the barbell, or you can round the spine, and that'll make the spine a little bit longer, take up more space, shoulders get over the barbell. She did the ladder, back uh, rounded, um, but you're gonna have some of that anyway, uh, but I feel like it's less efficient. What you gain, maybe speed off the floor, that, that is definitely a thing that people have reported when they round their back. It comes off faster, the bar comes faster off the floor. Uh, you give up and lock out, because then it's hard to like reclaim that fully locked out position. So. For me, I would have her slow down the sort of setup. A lot of people try to get in this rush of like, all right, I gotta bring my shins to the bar, set my back, big breath, pull, all in one motion. And what I would do is slow that down. I would raise the hips up uh, slightly. I would squeeze the chest uh, uh, up and the back harder and try to maintain that position with the shoulders over the barbell off the floor. It's gonna feel weird at first, but uh, she's 14 years old. She's got a long career of lifting in front of her. We don't need to max out right now, particularly in the gym, although that didn't look like a max attempt, just, just saying. In any case, this has been tech support, lift support, episode number three. Tell me what you thought in the comments. If you wanna be on the channel, again, you can send me a video, mediaparbellmedicine.com. Ideally, it's an attachment, but if you're doing a file sharing service, I'll try to be better about checking the inbox. I do have a meet this weekend, so no promises that I'll do anything over this particular weekend. But next week, yeah, let's do it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. See you next time.